Yeah, last summer I had two root canals and an abortion. It was hot girl summer. <laughs> <laughs> dishes to come to this show. That's really nice of you. I know you have to go right back to it, but this will be a nice break, I think. Um, this wet, doing comedy outside is crazy. I feel like the one kid whose parents didn't care if they wore a turtleneck under their Halloween costume right now. Like, I feel... <laughs> yeah, it's Wonder Woman. I know. <laughs> this is great. Who, who here uh, lives alone and has been alone during the pandemic? You guys okay? <laughs> I am too, so no, I know the answer is no. Uh, the pandemic's been weird. I, uh, I find myself, I just been watching TV. That's all I do. I just watch television 26 hours a day, you know, putting in the work. It's <laughs> all I've been doing. I, uh, I just watch commercials now. I don't even fast forward, because like, you know, why? <laughs> Where could I possibly have to be? Um, so I've been watching a lot of commercials and I caught this one for, um, I never thought wind would be a factor for my hair in, in comedy, but here we are. Is it in my mouth? We don't know. Um, the answer is yes. Um, I had one whiskey before we did this. I, no, but I've been watching commercials and I caught this one recently for Nature Valley granola bars. Are we all familiar with those? They're like the two planks of oats that come in a package. You bite into one, it just turns into nine pounds of sawdust. You're like, did I have breakfast or build a bench? What happened here? If you like went into any office right now, even if nobody's been in it since March and you just emptied out a keyboard upside down, like a full nature valley bar would just fall from the keys. They're, so, they're everywhere, they're so gross, don't eat them. But in this ad, I saw this woman, she's like out for a hike or gets murdered, I didn't see the end. Um, she's in the woods alone though. And she's walking and she's admiring this beautiful vista of like mountains and trees and she's just taking it all in. And then she opens this package of Nature Valley granola bars and she bites into both of them at once. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, bitch, is your dentist a billionaire? Like, what is happening in your mouth? Are your teeth granite? Like the only way to eat a Nature Valley granola bar is to dip it in water like you're at the hot dog eating contest. Do you understand? <laughs> just. Right down the hatch. I can't stop thinking about her. Um, just because I can't, like, I'm just like, what else doesn't she know how to eat? Right? You know, I feel like this woman sees a bowl of soup and she's like, ooh, a hat. <laughs> she, like, opens a Twix. She's like, chocolate tampons. <laughs> well, better put them both in at once. Uh, I, I have just, I've always loved New York. My family you know, lived near the city when I was growing up, so we were always coming, and it just felt like, yeah, this feels like where I need to be. There's shows to actually do, as opposed to being like, well, I did the one, and now I'm gonna go home and mull over this set. Like, if you bomb at one of five, like, you don't even remember it. <laughs> You're just like, that was just one of the things I did tonight. Like, being home at night feels wrong. Like, I'm like, am I, I forgot to do something tonight. That's how it feels. Even nine months in, I still just like, am not used to being at home. I'm used to being out every night and it's been like, hard. like I didn't realize how much of my life was that hustle um, and now I'm bored. The more you have that represents you, I feel like having that like nice tight five is just kind of like, no, you're like, this is kind of who I am as a comedian right now. <laughs> <sighs> what a pandemic. What a pandemic it's been, you know? Um, it's been weird. This was, uh, the pandemic was strange. This was my fattest summer ever. Anyone else? Just. <laughs> Yes, great. It's crazy that this was my fattest summer just because last summer I was pregnant. Um, I didn't keep it, but I was. Um, that's going to be the rest of this set, so buckle up. Um, yeah, last summer I had two root canals and an abortion. It was hot girl summer. <laughs> that was about me. <laughs> no, it's t it's t it was, you know, I had an abortion and it, like, to me it was not a very big deal. I understand it is for some people. I'm going to talk about it a little lightly. like. And it's tough because like, I don't know what it's like to find out you're pregnant when you want to be pregnant. I hope that everyone who wants that gets that and everyone who gets that feels a moment of love and excitement and probably fear and ultimately fulfillment. I only know what it's like to find out you're pregnant when you don't want to be pregnant. And that fills you with a feeling that's a little more like, um, 
Like, you know when you trap a cockroach under a Tupperware in your apartment? You know, and you're like, ah! Oh! <laughs> I know it's there and I do have to kill it, but I need like a minute to deal with this. <laughs> it's a lot like that. Um. It's hard. I have very complicated feelings on motherhood. I 99% don't think that I want children. I've felt that my whole life. I feel like I will probably continue that. But it is hard because like, I do have friends who have children. And I feel like every time my friend has a baby, I always see that hospital uh, birth Instagram post, which I think we can all agree is when life really begins. Um, <laughs> But it'll always be like my friend and her partner and this tiny little baby in that pink and white and blue blanket. And I see that picture and I'm like, I mean, you're selling, it looks good. You're selling me on this. I get it. But then I realize my thoughts on motherhood when I see that photo are the same as my thoughts when I see a woman in like a really chic hat. You know, I'm just like, could I <laughs> pull that off? I don't know, you know, my head is huge. It would be a nightmare. Um, I, uh, I found out I was pregnant last summer when I was on tour. I was doing stand-up in Missouri. Not the coolest place to find out you're pregnant when you don't want to be pregnant. It's literally in the name of the state, Missouri. Um, not fun. And it was also during that time in the South last summer when all of those bills were popping off uh, that were all very restrictive about abortion or made it illegal to be a woman or whatever they were doing down there. But like, those bills are always terrible, right? Like, they always have that stupid name. They always call them the heartbeat bill, which is garbage, okay? Just because like, if somebody's pregnant, there are two heartbeats involved, not one, okay? Calling a bill like that the heartbeat bill is like being like, oh, Michael Jordan is the best athlete of all time. I mean, look at that baseball career. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> Right? And this is going to be the last dance, so we're... <laughs> so I had to go buy a pregnancy test, and I didn't know... Uh, I'd never taken a pregnancy test before. I went to CVS in St. Louis, and CVS is my safe space, so I felt like it was a good place to do it. Um, and I, I, I didn't know what a CVS in Missouri's pregnancy test aisle would look like. I was like... In my mind, it was just like a row of crucifixes and a wooden bless this mess sign. <laughs> They're like, good luck. <laughs> uh, but I bought, it was a normal place uh, because it's a normal, you know, it's a normal state, terrible legislators, but a normal state. Uh, and I, I got the test. I got back to the hotel I was staying in. I was just standing in the bathroom, pantsless, like unfolding the directions. And every pregnancy test scene I've ever seen in a movie or a television show, you always pee on a stick. That's like everything I've ever known. It's like you pee on a stick and the stick tells you what's happening. And the, the directions on this were like, pee in a cup and put the stick in a cup. And I was like, Yes! Oh my God, that's so much easier. And then I realized, oh, a man definitely invented the home pregnancy test. Like, I feel like men are like, what, you can't pee on whatever you want wherever it is in the room? Like... So I was like, oh, that's great. And I looked around this hotel room and there were no disposable cups. Like, all they had were like the crystal scotch tumblers that are in every bathroom of a hotel. And I'm always like, what Mad Men fantasy do you think I'm living out in a courtyard Marriott, okay? And I was like, oh, I could go ask for a cup, but I feel like I'd be weird about it. And I was like, all right, I'm, fuck it. I'm peeing in the glass. I peed in the glass. Um, I peed in the glass and then I put the test in there like a little life-ruining swizzle stick and a cocktail. Um, <laughs> And then I, I, when the test was over, I didn't know what to do with the glass because I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to take this home like a souvenir from my really great day. <laughs> but I was like, I also didn't want to just put it in the, in the garbage can because all that was in there was an empty bottle of wine and a positive pregnancy test. And I was like, I don't need any detectives putting together what happened here today. <laughs> So I was like, well, I don't want, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna throw it away, but I don't wanna just like chuck a giant heavy glass into a can or a bag, cause like it's gonna break and that's gonna be dangerous. And so I just wrapped it in like yards and yards of toilet paper and I like stuffed it with, I was like, am I shipping this? What's happening here? <laughs> the lesson at the end of that bit is of course, if you go to a hotel, don't use the glassware. <laughs> that's the safest thing you could do. But I, I, I did have an abortion and it wasn't a big deal and it, 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 taught, it, it went fine for me and I'm glad that that was the experience. But it did teach me like women are incredible. Like women are, unbelievable and strong. This is just complimenting myself for going through this experience, but all of us are great. But I, it just, like, I just think that women are much stronger than we get credit for in our culture. And like, I feel like James Bond should be a woman, you know? Like an indestructible hero, 
That is a woman to me, because like every Bond movie, any ex-boyfriend ever made me watch. All the villains always threaten him with things like serums, you know, like lasers. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's my skincare routine. Like, what else could you possibly have? I feel like female James Bond would be like strapped to a table, laser is coming up between her legs. She'll be like, yeah, would you please get both sides even this time? <laughs> Last lady really fucked it up. All right, you guys have been so fun. I've been Allison Libby. Thank you. Thank you.